knew coming over here that we were going to get had my chances of getting blown up at least once or twice. The family does know that you're doing this for, for their, their benefit. I think we're wasting our time. I don't think we should be here. If I thought about what my wife was doing every day while I'm here, I would drive myself crazy. You know, I think about, you know, things I've done in the past and, you know, how I've actually, my life has led up to this point, you know. Because any day, anything can happen. This is Afghanistan. But there's still that possibility that they're going to try to fuck us up. So everybody needs to keep a lookout. And again, it's new territory. So we don't know anything. Okay, well, the Taliban, Taliban's everywhere. You don't know who it is, it's insurgency. So they don't wear uniforms, they wear the same thing everybody else is wearing outside. So it could be anyone, we don't know. Nobody else has been war to since the Russians. And so far, the Taliban's pretty much run the show here. This used to be a big uh, command and control area for the Taliban, and the, hard, the hardest problem we're having right now is to find them. We're just uh, walking the roads and around 500 meters off the sides of the road, looking for any command wires, any weapons caches, uh, any trigger men that are out there trying to blow up our convoys or any uh, local national convoys. Just recently, they blew up a APPF truck and killed uh, quite a few guys and wounded quite a few. Just, you know, we're driving along the road and they hit us. I mean, it's scary in ways that, you know, it's just like, you never know what's gonna happen on each patrol because each patrol is different, man. You know, usually we don't, we're not able to find these guys until it's too late and after they blow something up. It's, it's just a frustrating thing. We, it's, it's one of those times where you get hit and you never see the enemy and the enemy just barely sees you for a second and they cause a, you know, a significant amount of damage. And uh, it's kind of hard to combat. And, um, you know, it kind of wears on the guys a little bit, but. Yeah, it's, I'd say it's, it's really frustrating. Trying to figure out who's good or who's bad. Damn. Basically, the Army's been the easiest job I've ever had, I man. They, they, they tell you what to do, you do it. You know? No questions asked, you just do it, you get it done with. It's pretty easy. Being a soldier requires a lot of discipline, uh, integrity. It's not for everybody. You get treated like a little kid all the time. I think it's very fucking annoying. Yeah, that's for sure, but if you make this decision to become a soldier, you 
You gotta make sure that you're gonna make that decision wholeheartedly. If, if I could walk away from this scot-free, I probably would, but I can't really do that, so I might as well suck it up and get it over with. Be a soldier is like, it's probably the greatest accomplishment I ever accomplished in my life. I, you don't have much option. I mean, you don't have a choice. I signed a piece of paper that said I was going to do this, so I guess I have to do it, whether the sacrifices are good or bad. Yeah. Maintain discipline, you know, that was, really, that was one thing really hard for me to do, but, you know, I've, I've done that. Like, you grow up, you mature, and you, you understand a hard day's work. You know, like, my immediate family, they always you know, they thought I was like a jokester, you know, they didn't really, they didn't really take me seriously, but uh, ever since I joined the Army and the military, like, my friends, they just give me so much more respect. You have to go wherever the Army tells you, and just, a lot of times you have to do things you don't want to do, but you have to because it's your job. That's the same snicker. My eight years of uh, service and eight years of sacrifice, I've had to sacrifice uh, mostly my marriage and my relationship with my children and my family. Sacrifice, I uh, sacrifice a lot of things. Little, little, little things like you have to shave, I can't grow, I used to have long hair, I used to have a beard before I joined the army, I can't do that. Been with a woman in quite some time. Uh, <laughs> don't take showers very often. Over here, I don't smell too good right now. So, uh, yeah. First off, uh, when you're deployed and you're in Afghanistan, it's more like you're camping every single day. It's rough at times. We share a tent with probably about 80 people. You got a little, little to no uh, space for yourself. You live in a tent next to some guys that can be annoying sometimes. I don't have running water. I have to burn our poop, you know, and, uh, and our toilets that we have, so, you know, we have to pee in poles that are dug in the ground with lime buried in there. I'm, I'm on the other side of the planet, you know, I'm away from all my loved ones, besides my, my boys here that I'm with, I'm away from my fiance, my mother, my father, my brother, all my family. But the hardest part is, you know, knowing that I'm not going to be home until, you know, Christmas time, about a year from now, that's the hardest part. My son was just born not but three weeks ago. I mean, I'm going to miss out on the first nine months of his life. I mean, my wife's going to have a hard time taking care of a kid all by herself. But it pays the bills, and so I guess, you know, it's worth it. Food that's cooked over flame every single day. So it's kind of like you're eating at Wendy's, but not very good. <laughs> I haven't eaten pork in over two months. <laughs> Till today. Till today. Your, your immediate family now is the guys that you work with because if you know if you're not there to support them and they're not there to support you, they could get killed. The guys here, we're all brothers pretty much. My friends here are great. You know, I wouldn't I don't know what I would do without them sometimes. <laughs> make it okay. Don't make it on the hands of my six. <laughs> <laughs>
People are nice, very warming people. I feel like they hate us. Some of the villagers are really friendly. I mean, they'll, they'll treat you like, almost like you belong. Most of them just look at you like they want to saw your head off with a spoon. I don't know. I don't really find them too friendly. I mean, like, the ones out in this area ain't bad. The further out you go, the dirtier and dirtier looks you get. The more and more stranger to people act, the more and more bullshit they give you. I've never seen, I've been all over the place, and I've never seen a place like this before. I've never seen the people so, I don't know, deprived. And, I don't know, it hurts, kind of. But I believe in our fight here. I mean, they don't have all, you know, some of the cool things and, you know, stuff that we take for granted over there. They don't have that. If you look at places like, in the states like New Orleans, Louisiana, and the poverty and stuff out there, then you come here, we realize that that's that New Orleans isn't really as perverse as we initially thought. These people are lost. Like, they they need some guidance. Like, and they can't do it. Obviously, they can't do it by themselves. Sometimes people need help. I think they're not very motivated, because, I mean, it's been how long they've been here, for as many as how, uh, how this world has changed and evolved. So, like, we got, you know, buildings, electricity, power, water, showers, and stuff like that, you know, clean houses and stuff and these people are just like way behind like I'm just it's, it's like it's disgusting like how behind they are. I really just want to change the people's point of view here about America and realize that we're not a big evil superpower we're, we're here trying to help and change the world for the better. We're over here trying to tell them what they should be doing but it doesn't necessarily need what they need to be doing. They've been doing this exact same thing since Alexander the Great came through and the Mongols came through. They've been just fine. That'd be more important to go fight another country that actually has something that, you know, is dangerous to the world, like nukes and stuff. This place don't got no nukes. They don't got no bombs. They ain't got planes. It's just America. America wants to get in everyone's business. You know? I, if, if we had to go back to the USA, Everything like that, it's just uh, just leave here completely. I would not feel like scared or anything. I would not be worried about any Taliban coming to you know United States to try to attack us. I would not be worried. If you ask me, we should just get rid of the Taliban and let these people do everything that they usually do. We don't need to bring in technology or anything like that. They're happy without technology. They're they're, they're healthy. They have everything they need and. The only times they need anything from us is when there's an emergency. So let's get rid of the Taliban. If we can do that, then we can make these people a lot better off. <laughs> at least we've got these beautiful views to look at every once in a while, right? <laughs>
And uh, I mean, I guess you could say that's when it's the hardest. Just being over here stresses me out, I'm not seeing my family. If you dwell on that kind of thing, you're gonna drive yourself nuts. We got, what is it, May? We got six, seven months left in country. If I thought about what my wife was doing every day while I'm here, I would drive myself crazy. When I get home, I'd like to have most of the problems fixed. And this time when I come home, I'm gonna let her be in charge, because I know now, if I come home and try to be in charge, <laughs> I'm not gonna be in charge, I'm just gonna fight. So I gotta let her be in charge, and I gotta let her run the show and teach me how things need to be ran now, because I've been gone for so long. You let too many things get to you here, uh, that's when you start getting real depressed and start missing home even more. So I try to just keep that uh, like on the side of my mind. I look at my fiance's picture and I just get my head clear and I just focus on the mission of what we're supposed to get done. I, I write I write rhymes and stuff, you know, I get bored. I mean, I'm not the best best you know I guess rapper out there, but I do my I hold my own if I have to. It's something to do in the spare time. I'm BC the boss, I spit this verbal holocaust that'll kill millions. Call me an evil villain, I'm the Dr. Doom, a third platoon. Leave you with your ass hanging out like a baboon. Oh, lately I've been writing about Afghanistan and all, like, what kind of stuff that goes on around here. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's actually pretty comical. I like it. I think it's funny. I'm a crazy man, kill for fun like the son of Sam. Up in Afghanistan, hunting the Taliban, just getting older. Make you blow up on the cover, call me Freud. Put you in hypnosis, leave you in a fucking state of constant psychosis, suicidal, wrapped in explosives. Every once in a while I think about, man, it'd be real nice to have a cold beer right now. Being able to go out on a Friday, Saturday night and go get drunk, hang out with friends, I miss my wife. You know, I wish I could see uh, my girl back home or, you know, uh, damn, I wonder what such and such is doing back home. All day, every day, most of the time and stuff, I'll sit here and I'll smile because I know that I have something to look forward to, something major to look forward to when I get home. And this is just one day closer to me getting back home to my family. I also think about uh, my children and think about what we can do when I get home for vacation and holiday and anything else. And right now, I plan on going to Walt Disney World when I get home for R&R. &R. They say that absence makes the heart grow fonder. Well, it does. I'll tell my mom and dad that I love them and uh, that Katrina, I love you too. And uh, I can't wait to see all of you guys uh, <laughs> when I get back. But it also, it's a scary thing to be gone so long because you don't know what's going to happen. And I think anticipation is a killer. But like my friend last week, he got blown up by an IED. He broke his arm. He's fine and everything. But little things like that, you know, you worry because any day anything can happen. This is Afghanistan. But I mostly think about home and wanting to go back, go back to Alton and just hang out with all my friends and be normal again. Probably, it happens pretty much every morning that we get uh, somebody turns on the iPod in the morning. And it doesn't even matter if it's the stupidest song you ever heard, but you got about 35 guys singing the same song. And a little bit of chicken pie. Go on Friday night. Even tonight's so precious. And you wake up with a smile on your face, that's, that's probably the greatest thing that I could say could happen. If you got one guy waking up grumpy, then the whole tent wakes up grumpy. But if one guy turns on that that one song, maybe I will survive a little. At first I was afraid, you know? It just gets the whole the whole tent going, you know? Everybody's having a good day. Oh, no! Bad puppy! Bad, bad puppy! Bad puppy!
Most important to me, I guess, is that my, all my friends make it home alive. My leadership make it home. We all make it home in one piece. And we had a we had a buddy a couple about a week and a half ago get injured in an IED, and uh, that's important to me. You know, at least he got a, he's not killed, but it's still important to me that you know he made it home. Woo! Oh man! One thing I learned, uh, you know, not just not just me, but everybody, you know, everybody. I work with the third team, man. We're, uh, we're pretty, we're pretty brave and courageous. I learned that. I mean, we go out in patrols. You know, they say we're supposed to get attacked, and I really don't feel scared or anything. You know, it's like just another one of them days here in Afghanistan. You just go about doing your job. Yeah, I wanted, you know, to make a difference. I actually wanted to mean something. I don't want to just come here and not get anything achieved. I want to you know, do my job and you know, go home. I want to do it the right way. I don't want to come over here and not get the job done the way it should be. I learned like I'm very fortunate to be born in the USA. I'm really happy to be American after seeing this place. Probably half these people have electricity. None of them have running water. Just you feel very fortunate to be American, be be where, be from the United States. So it's an experience, I'll tell you that. Just going outside the wire, knowing I'm in harm's way anytime. It's oh, it's a, it's a very enlightening experience. It makes you really appreciate life, knowing that any minute something bad could happen. But you know. I can handle stress so much better now because because you have to, you know, if you let it get the best of you. I'll, I'll probably go home and I wouldn't have a, a worry in the world and everyone's going to be like, wow, you changed. And I'm going to be like, yeah, you know, I can, I can deal with things, things you didn't think you could deal with before because you have to here in order to, to wake up the next morning. How to, how to live your life without the needs of, you know, necessities that everybody else has. Just do with yourself. And uh, that's basically what I was going after, you know, joining the military, especially the infantry. I wanted to know how to take care of myself. And uh, now that I know how to take care of myself, I know how to take care of soldiers. And I know I can take care of my family now. And that's all I need to know now for right now in my life. There's really nothing I need anything. I don't need anything else out of the military, basically. Keep an open mind uh, while you're deployed. Before you're deployed, you're going to understand a lot more. You're not going to be closed off and thinking one way the whole deployment. Like, I hate Afghanis. I haven't really learned too much from fucking being here, other than this country sucks. You gotta be open. You really have to be. Like, you can't say, I hate black people, I hate Mexicans, I hate white people. You have to be open. Open to everything. You gotta be able to help everybody out. If you constantly think one way all the time, when you get back to the States, it's gonna be 10 times worse. If you don't have your mind prepared for anything that possibly could happen, anything could happen to you as a person or your friend, honestly, I believe you're not going to really be able to make it outside. You're going to come back to the States. You're going to turn to beer, drugs, uh, insubordination, anything, anything could happen. You're going to start doing something you shouldn't be doing. You dwell on the things that might happen or could happen, or the, definitely dwell on the bad things, you'll lose your mind. You gotta, you gotta think happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts for sure.
So like before I even came here, I knew like, you know, there's a possibility I could die. So that's like a sacrifice I took, you know. So it's a part of life, every, every, everybody dies, so. Hey, there are worse things in life than dying. You could live every day of your life with no arms and no legs, and, and then you're just a vegetable, or you can't move. You know, there's worse things than just dying. Maybe everybody could hate you every day for the rest of your life. Or maybe you woke up one day and you had no head. <laughs> you know, anything, anything could be worse. Before I go on a mission, uh, I used to not think about what, what happened until uh, I almost got blown up by an ID. So now it's, um, uh, when they tell us what roads we're going down, you know, I think about what uh, kind of culverts are there because every time I drive over one, I'm, you know, I get that little, feel in my stomach like, man, here we go again, every single time. As a little kid and like most of my life, I always thought that when I thought of a soldier, I only thought of a killer, like straight up infantry, badass guy with a gun, just killing people. And that's, that's what I think is a soldier, is an infantry man. Better better to kill someone than me to die, that's how I see it. I'm here to do a job, like, if I join the infantry for a reason because I have a killer mentality if it has to be. Like, I, I don't believe on killing anyone for no reason. I you don't believe in murder, but in combat, yes. If I have to do my job, I will. That's just part of, the, that's just part of what comes with the job. You just gotta do what you gotta do. Follow orders. You just have to kind of have the right mindset. I guess everybody's different when it comes to something like that. But I don't, I just have, I've already seen a few things and it didn't really bother me, so. As long as I make it home, I don't give a shit what happens. I don't. If you don't kill them, they're gonna kill you. So that's how you deal with it for yourself. And then you deal with it for your buddies because if it's not for your buddies getting you through this mission, you know, through this year that we're here, you know, you're like, hey man, it's, it's either them or us. It's them or me, it's survival of the fittest. And uh, I plan on surviving. So and I have been for 36 months now in combat, so I'm doing pretty good so far, if you ask me. <laughs> and I know that I'm gonna be the one going home, not him. And I know that if I do my job and he doesn't get to go home at the end of the day, I might save a life of, you know, one of my buddies and he might get to go home to his family. I mean, everyone I know in our platoon is willing to die for one another, so it's a bond that's unexplainable. We're all waiting to uh, uh, pop that cherry, so to say, and uh, finally fire that first shot back at the enemy. And, uh, I know I'm definitely waiting to uh, get into a firefight and fire that first shot back at somebody and hopefully they go down, but you know, who knows. Oh, hell yeah. I want to fucking shoot someone really bad. I've been here for fucking five months and I haven't got to fire my weapon yet. It pisses me off. I hope to God I get to fucking kill someone soon. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. How would I feel about having to kill somebody? Tell you what, I'll think about that after it's done. <laughs> the first thing I'll think about is saving my life and the life of the, of the soldiers that I'm with. So. You know, and uh, but we created this problem. Taxes are going up on uh, small items that were relatively cheaper before, and uh, it's it wasn't it it wasn't good when I was home. You 
know, there's so many people around got bad credit in America. And it's because, it ain't because that they're not willing to work, it's because they can't find a job. Well, that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm going to wind up staying in, because I really have nothing to do outside of here. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be like a lot of job loss, like a lot of people laid off. So like the work outside of here, probably not gonna be heavy, you know, probably gonna not to be the, that many jobs opening. So uh, that's probably why I'm staying here for a little bit, you know, until our country gets back on our feet, you know, and then when I get out, I can actually get a job with a decent pay. This has happened in American history plenty of times. The economy has went to shit and it's came back. So, I mean, I say give it a couple years, you get the right people to do the right things and America will bounce back. I always do. So, I mean, I think by the time I get out of the Army, things should start shaping up. It's about six years from now, so I have faith. I'm not really too worried about it. Of course, I think America is the greatest, you know, country ever, so. I, I see us, you know, we'll be all right, you know. We're, we're, we're the U.S., so, you know, we always, we always you know, drive on no matter what. We'll, we'll be all right. As the economy is going right now, if it keeps getting worse and worse, then pretty much the military is your way to go because you have job security. You know that you're not going to get fired or anything unless you do something stupid. I tell myself I'm not worried, but that deep down I am. But uh, everybody's worried, and you have to be cautious. So. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna jump out in the pool and hopefully it's not too cold because uh, I'm gonna come after any job I, I see fit. The Army will just be my past, it's not gonna be my life. I like my job, but it can be too demanding sometimes. I'm gonna look into photography, journalism, uh, something to do with writing. I read a lot more now. You know, I try to exercise my uh, chance to uh, learn something new every day. And if I can't, then I'll just be stuck in the Army the next 20 years. I don't want that. It doesn't make me happy anymore. I'm, just, I'm here for the experience, serve my country, and then once more, once my time's done, I'm gonna go, uh, back to America and do, just follow my dreams as, as close as I can. Yeah, I think about the future a lot because it's all about the future. If you don't build for the future, then you're not going to be prepared. If we don't get this right now, Lord knows, or shall I say, Lord help our children. You know? what, are we, what kind of legacy are we going to leave for them? <laughs> Everything gets worse before it gets better. I don't know if we've seen our worst days or not. In the future, I, I mean, I believe this could be like, I don't know, personally, I think it's gonna be like a World War III. Just the way everything's going, something's gonna happen. Like. I can just see like a World War III breaking out, you know, like countries going against each other, just going crazy. And uh, whenever that happens, I'll be right back here, ready to fight. Because right now the world's in trouble, and rather than us fighting against ourselves, we need to actually come together and collaborate on the solution of what's going on in the world around us. I definitely think that uh, I think the future is going to be pretty good for the next the next thousand years. I don't plan on living a thousand years, but if I do, it'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for everybody from Europe, uh, America, any country, the, the news only shows a small portion of it. So watch all the news you can on it. Don't, don't just watch the IED blast or the, the firefight. 
because there's plenty of villages, there's plenty of uh, cities, and just local areas and rural areas that are nice. Even in Afghanistan, I'm sure there is. So if you ask me, if you always constantly just sit there and watch the news or hear hearsay from other people, that's wrong. Get out, get outside, go check it out for yourself. My name is Terry Lytton, I'm Sergeant E5, uh, I'm a team leader in the uh, 3rd Platoon, Bravo Company. Uh, I have two guys under me and uh, my job is to make sure that they come home safe. My name is uh, Clifford Cox, 21 years old, 11 Charlie, which is a mortar. I work with the 60s on the line. I go out on uh, patrols all throughout here. I'm a uh... Specialist Fajardo, United States Army. Uh, MOS is uh, infantry. I've uh, been in Afghanistan for five months now. Justin Cleddy, I'm 11 Bravo, which is infantry. So what, what do you do um, Well, right now, our job is to just basically win the hearts and minds of the people. And... My name is Eric Johnson. I'm a staff sergeant of the U.S. Army uh, infantry. And uh, currently, I'm a weapons squad leader in uh, Bravo Company, 3rd Platoon, 287, 3rd Brigade, 10th Mountain Division. My name is Daniel Kidwell, I'm private first class, and uh, our job is basically just push the enemy out of this valley and uh, you know, make sure that they're not here anymore. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Grant Shimchik, I'm a private in the United States Army, 21 years old, I'm from uh, Alton, Illinois, it's right across the Mississippi River from St. Louis. Robert Beverly Payne Thompson Jr. Robert B.P. Thompson Jr. Hey. Alright. I'm Matt Adams. I'm 20 years old. I'm a 13 Fox Ford Observer. I um I blow the enemy up. That's pretty much what I do. Um PFC Keith Kerrigan. Uh, third platoon, Bravo Company 287. Basically, my job here is I'm a assistant gunner. My name is Specialist Anthony Belcher. Uh, my job is to cook for these soldiers here on uh, Black Hawk Cop, and uh, I have a crew of two other cooks right now, and you know. It, Somebody's got to do it. <laughs>